There are so many polarizing reviews out there for the Slate VSX system. They seem to be either overwhelmingly positive to the point where the video feels sponsored or negative to the degree where I think you've missed the point. Now I'm in a fairly unique position to give a really balanced review because I'm an all-rounder. I produce video content, I write and record music, I play a lot of guitar, I listen to a lot of music on headphones, and you know, I just wanna see if these are any good. The idea of the Slate VSX system, of course, is that they use clever DSP to simulate being in different listening environments with a variety of speakers from high-end mastering studios to car audio to boombox to phone speakers. So in this video, I'll show you my reaction to trying them for the first time. Plus, I'm gonna answer all of the, uh, you know, many questions that I had before I ordered this. Are they comfortable? How does this integrate into my workflow? Can it be used system-wide and not just in your DAW? If so, what's that like? What's it really for? And are they fatiguing to use? I bought the Platinum Edition, and is that really necessary instead of just going for the Basic Essentials Edition? I wanna find out. I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip around to the bits you want, no problem at all. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers, so it would really mean a lot to me if you could reach down and hit that subscribe button. Uh, it costs you nothing, helps me out massively, and I appreciate it in advance, I thank you. This video is unsponsored and I bought these with my own cash. However, my channel is made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from Patreon go back into the channel. I buy gear, I review the gear in an unbiased way and then I give the gear back to my backers in giveaways and that kind of thing. If that's of interest, do check it out. It's all linked below. Onward. Kicking off with an overview of VSX, and I've never mentioned this before, but I am a headphone fan. I'm quite into my headphones. I've got two sets that I'm using and really loving at the moment. I've had these for a long time. The Sennheiser HD 650, um, really great open back, um, really comfortable. And more for tracking, but I've got the closed back Biodynamic uh, DT770 Pro, the 80 ohm version. And that's really funny because VSX Platinum Edition has emulations of both of these headphones. So that's really funny. I'm gonna have to try and, you know, see if they're close, see how they stack up. And here's what you get when you buy the Platinum Edition, differentiated, of course, by this sticker that says Platinum Edition. There is a code that you enter on Slate's website where you can get the extra emulations. Uh, you, you're meant to pull this up and don't throw it away. And this is just a card that says, you know, listen to it. Take time to listen to it. Otherwise, it's not Slate's fault if you don't like the product. And then we have, you know, everything else. We've got a sticker because you definitely need that. And then the headphones, of course. I wasn't completely sold on the build quality when I first picked them up, but more on that later. You get a case, which, you know, uh, fine. I'm not sure how much I'll use it personally, but you know, good, I guess, if you're into traveling, which I suppose lots of people who buy this will be. The cable seems pretty good quality, albeit rather slim. Slimmer than I expected anyway. Going back to the headphones and I definitely feel that you get your money's worth when it comes to the build, just from handling them straight out of the box. We know that Slate have made a few revisions when it comes to the build since this first launched, namely the metal headband, which I'm sure is a big upgrade from what they had before. Anyway, now let's go check out the features of VSX. And yes, onto the features and the specs. Now, I, I'm not gonna go through all of them because you know this is not an ad and uh, you can just check Slate's website if you want to know the nitty gritty, but there are a few specs worth noting. The published frequency range is 10 hertz up to 20 kilohertz, and that's impressive if true, but you know, I'd like to see a frequency response chart, but obviously that kind of seems, seems a bit pointless seeing as every time you change rooms, that's gonna change drastically, so I don't know. Slate have done some really clever porting to try and stop the bass frequencies from building up too much, which is so often an issue with closed back design headphones. The impedance is 37 ohms, and personally, I would have preferred 250 ohms, you know, for mixing purposes. If you're unfamiliar with, uh, you know, headphone impedance, basically the lower that number, the ohm number, the easier it is to drive them and get a good volume, but, at the expense of fidelity. 
I get that Slate were probably thinking about the traveling, you know, audio engineer who uh, they're, they're traveling around. Maybe they don't have the best headphone amp with them to drive, you know, higher impedance headphones. I get that, but I feel like they've probably left a bit of fidelity on the table there. I don't know if you guys saw the video that Slate put out with a bunch of pro audio guys reacting to trying VSX and it was, you know, quite cheesy. Lots of, whoa, man, whoa, whoa, that is crazy. It's exactly the sound of some famous studio, man, whoa. And they were hardly going to put out a video of guys sat there going, I don't like it. So here's my impartial first reaction, the first time I actually put them on and tried them. Okay, so uh, I've got them. They feel really nice. They're, they feel less like um, the studio headphones that I've got. They want to move around a lot more. They're much more kind of, um, I don't know why, the, the word that comes to mind is slinky. Okay, let's see how they are for comfort. Okay, that's comfortable. I've got it set up on Stephen's mic room. This is the default setting, midfield speakers. Uh, and I've got, I pulled up one of my songs. I'm just going to listen. I'll probably, I'll probably spin you on uh, and you can get my reaction. Okay, I just, I just stopped it. Uh, something that um, I'm sure this takes some getting used to and um, I, at the moment, I, the, my first reaction was um, it doesn't sound as good as, you know, listening to um, bypassed, you know, as in just using the headphones as normal headphones without all of the psychoacoustic trickery going on. But I know that's not the point of this, um, so I'm going to keep going. I've just switched it now onto the Archon uh, midfield preset, which everyone talks about this preset as kind of being, you know, uh, the go-to. It's, it's a lot of people's favourite, and I can kind of see why uh, it was, it was, I found that I've noticed a few things with my mix that I couldn't notice before. And um, yeah, that's encouraging. So I've just switched it onto the, uh, the Sennheiser HD650 emulation. And obviously I have the real deal. So um, I'm just, I've just listened to it. I'm gonna compare now. But it's pretty, it's pretty close. Uh, maybe it's just a level matching thing, but it's probably 85% there. Just trying out Mike Dean's studio and he's got the, um, the near field monitors, which are the, they're actually uh, NS10s, um, which I, I am really familiar with um, NS10s. And they do, they do sound like I'm listening to NS10s. This is going to be interesting and it needs, I need to spend a lot more time with this. And I'm sure Future Half doing the review has done. Moving on to build quality and the two main questions I had about these were, uh, of course, are they well, well built? And then are they comfortable? You know, good headphones, they should last a really long time. Like the two that I mentioned earlier, um, I've had these for well over a decade and all I've had to do in that time is just replace these um, material ear pads and that's it. Otherwise, you know, they just, they just last. As for the build quality of these, I would say they're okay. You know, we're looking at quite a bit of plastic. I like the metal headband, that's a good thing. And I would say they are comfortable to wear. They're not heavy and they feel secure when on. One thing I'm really not sure about is the longevity of these. I really don't feel like they're gonna last as long as my other headphones. The material Slate have chosen for the ear pads and headband is just weird. They call it collagen leather. Now I was curious as to what collagen leather actually is because I thought that collagen was the principal ingredient of normal leather which it is. Now, I couldn't find a concrete answer to this, but from what I could tell, collagen leather is made from a synthetic fibrous material with collagen to kind of bind it all together. And all I know is I really don't like the feel of it. It's really soft, don't get me wrong, but feels almost moist and sticky. Yes, this is completely subjective and you may not have an issue with this, but for me, it's a real consideration. Moving on to the user interface and user experience side of things, and I'll start the questions I had before. 
How does this integrate to your DAW? And then can you just use it system wide? And if so, what's that like? Well, using it in your DAW is the simplest setup wise, as you just drop the Slate software as the last plugin on your master bus and you are rocking. You can use a system wide version of the Slate software to use with your other programs. However, this caused problems for me with my workflow. The main thing being that I use the phenomenal Neural DSP standalone plugins for playing guitar, and no matter what, I couldn't get these to play nicely with the Slate system-wide software, and for reasons that I won't go into right now, this would cause havoc for my recording process. As for the sound quality of the headphones without any kind of emulations, I really like the way this, these sound. Um, the, the word that kept coming up for me is balanced. The bass is authoritative, but controlled, I would say. The mids and highs, whilst they don't hold a candle to my Sennheisers, for example, they're, they're not bad and they kind of, they hold their own, let's say that. I did do a direct comparison using the headphone emulations of my other headphones. And I have to say, they do a pretty damn good job of kind of encapsulating the, the spirit of those headphones. And that's a really nice way to look at VSX. You know, they, they are basically a lot of very high-end headphones in one. One big advantage of the whole room emulation thing is that it introduces crosstalk. The interaction of frequencies from both the left and right channels that you don't usually get with headphones. So that lack of crosstalk you get on normal headphones really is kind of one of the main reasons why it's advisable not to mix audio completely on headphones and why you know, these room emulations can be a really massive advantage. But what is VSX really for? Because I've seen lots of reviewers of this saying that, you know, that they're returning them because they mixed a couple of songs on VSX and compared the original mixes that they've done on their monitor setup that they've had for ages and they preferred the original mix on their monitors and they were somehow surprised about that. In my experience, I would say the old advice of, you know, if you can help it, never mix on headphones and I, I really think that still applies with VSX. Now, if you're the type of person who, you, if you find yourself bouncing mixes down and checking it on your phone, checking it on in your car, on Bluetooth speakers, on AirPods, whatever, then VSX really might make sense for you because you know that it's a great reference tool. Then we have the question of listening fatigue, and I'm a little sad to say that I did experience some listening fatigue when using these after a little while, every time in fact, um, and that's compared to using my Sennheisers, the open back ones. Perhaps it's just me, I just find that I, I tend to get fatigue far quicker on closed back designs. I'm sure many of you feel the same way. And I think I just hoped that VSX was different because of the clever porting um, that I mentioned earlier in the video, but alas. Moving on to value for money and alternatives, and I bought the Platinum Edition, and I'm sure for most of you, the decision of whether to go with the Platinum, the Premium one, or the Essentials one, the Basic Edition, will be a really tricky decision for you. Platinum gives you all of the rooms, and I'd say the ones that are highlights for me are Archon, Zuma, Mike Dean, plus all of the headphone emulations. However, if I could go back and give myself advice on this, I would say to skip Platinum get the Essentials Edition, and then just cherry pick a few of the emulations that you can get on the Slate Marketplace. That would have worked out quite a bit cheaper. A question that I see a lot when it comes to these headphones is, are they actually better than, say, a decent pair of headphones and, you know, using an equivalent piece of software? Because there are other companies now doing this kind of software. One such example of this is Sound ID Reference from Sonarworks, and 
I decided to try this out recently and I was kind of blown away. This is so cool, they've taken frequency response graphs from hundreds of different headphones. As you can see here, I've got my Sennheiser HD 650s loaded. They are reasonably neutral, but as you can see, it does have that low frequency roll off and a few peaks and troughs in the upper mid and high frequencies. Sound ID reference applies the opposite EQ curve to iron out any of these peaks and troughs and essentially give you a much more flat listening experience. And I have to say, I was amazed by the results. I tried the same thing with my Biodynamic DT770 Pro 80 ohm version, and you can see there's a little bit of low end hype and a bit of a smile kind of curve and then some top end hype. And this software basically fixed all of those things and I preferred the sound of both of my headphones after these profiles had been applied. What's more, it will give you VSX style monitor emulation, which of course gives you the different size speakers and it gives you that all important crosstalk. And I hate to say it, I found this more convincing a listening experience than the VSX emulations. You also get cars, laptops, smartphones, TVs, that kind of thing. Anyway, this is not sponsored by Sonyworks at all, but I highly recommend checking this out. It's not a subscription model or anything. Yeah, I'm sold. The other piece of software I've been hearing about is Dear VR Mix. I've heard it's good. I've not yet had a chance to try it out, but I feel like maybe a deeper dive into these versus VSX might be a good subject for another video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Anyway, now moving on to my pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros, because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Let's do it. So starting with the pros, and they are comfortable to wear, except for, you know, the one reason, which I'm gonna mention in the cons. These are good sounding headphones in their own right without the emulations. These are great for stereo imaging. You actually get crosstalk, which is really great, and you don't get that with regular headphones. But hang on, a thought occurred. Surely I can just add a plugin to kind of simulate this in Logic or something. Let's check it out. And yeah, the answer is you kind of can. On the imaging subcategory in the stock plugins in Logic, you've got a few options. You've got this binaural post-processing plugin, which actually seems to work pretty well. There's a few different settings for headphones and then for speakers, but I'd recommend trying it. And then a little bit more basic, we have the direction mixer, which simply just affects the stereo spread. And this works too. It's not as kind of convincing sounding. Sure, these are not impulse responses mimicking the sound of speakers, but if it's just crosstalk you want, then here's your answer. Okay, there you go. Back to the pros and cons. I would say these are a really good way of monitoring sub bass frequencies without buying a subwoofer for your monitor setup. And onto the cons, and I really don't like those collagen leather ear pads. They're just not for me. I still wouldn't recommend mixing solely on VSX. You are best off thinking of this as a reference tool. I found I was getting some listening fatigue and this is very personal. Of course, this is when compared to my Sennheisers, which are famously easy to listen to for longer periods of time. I hate to do it, but I kind of have to question the value a little bit. And that's just because I don't believe that platinum represents the best value. As I just said, my recommendation is to get essentials and then cherry pick a few room emulations from Slate store. Finally, to my opinion and this, I think, is just one of those things where it's a really quite brilliant product that's just not for me. Sadly, I didn't like the ear pads and I refused to spend more money to kind of replace them with third party uh, replacements that might not fit well or that kind of thing. VSX also doesn't integrate the way that I would like it to as seamlessly as I would like it to into my workflow. And for those few reasons, <sighs> This has to go, I'm sorry. Um, however, I do need your help. Please, can you let me know if you have any recommendations of really, truly great headphones that I just have to check out, yeah? Please. I want to just reiterate to people thinking that they're gonna be doing full mixes on VSX and that they'll replace their monitor setup. And I disagree. I want to say one last time that I think VSX should be thought of as a reference tool, something that you reach to after you've done a full mix and you're happy with the way it sounds, that's when you reach for VSX. So to my final thoughts, and I would say if you don't already own a pair of headphones, a good pair, or you're due for an upgrade and you don't mind the collagen leather ear pads, then Slate VSX really should be on your list to check out. The room emulations are cool, 
I mean, they're kind of nasty sounding too, but that's the whole point, isn't it? But also these are a really good sounding headphones without the emulations. So if I just, just described your situation, then, you know, you could just get these, you've got a good pair of headphones and just, you could even just consider the room emulations as a bonus. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I wanna hear from you. Do you agree? What did I miss? definitely let me know in the comment section and I will see you down there. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio recording, of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.